In order to understand the Grover, you have to understand Burke and James, its history. Burke and James was originally founded in 1887 as a company that did not make almost anything, instead selling mostly rebranded products. Whatever they did make was modestly priced according to a 1950s catalog. It was the people's brand, not luxury, but utility. This was at a time before people used cameras as fashion accessories. Kind of like Chrysler in the mid 80s to late 90s, when it pushed captive imports like the Eagle, a rebranded, badly designed French car that as a whole, in kind of a postmodern way, started out as a nothing, but ended up becoming a something when it got slapped with a new badge. Burke and James aimed at the user, the person just starting out or someone who didn't want to blow his wad on gear, a real photographer, not a poser. There is just nothing to brag about with the Burke and James, and so why would you carry it if not to actually use it? It will never be an extension of yourself, perhaps in the same way that any other product is designed to make you feel like a more whole being, a better version of yourself, if you just bought it. And notice I did not say someone who did not want to blow his wad on gear so he could concentrate on image making, because even back then there was good gear and just okay gear, and the good gear meant, and still does today, that you only need to spend so much effort physically and mentally in actually working the camera, and anything that's left over is available for image making. But Burke and James cameras always meant that you needed to spend more effort on the gear side than the image side. It was not just what the brand represented, even if the cameras worked perfectly, and some really did. It was just how they were made, simple and cost effective, which often meant the finish and handling left some things to be desired. Just like Chrysler of the 80s and 90s, Burke and James was so American, it wasn't even made in America. Like those Chrysler captive imports and post-NAFTA cars, which were only American by self-determination, Burke and James bought bottom-of-the-barrel lenses from other makers. Lenses that did not make the grade of those companies' quality control. Burke and James bought these lenses, promised to never mention the original makers and brand name, slapped on a Burke and James sticker, and marketed it as their own. Sometimes, they even had their in-house workshop re-engrave these captive import lenses with the ambiguous name Carl Mayer. This was a play on the names Carl Zeiss, one of the biggest names in the industry, and Hugo Mayer, an East German lens maker with the then recognized name. In perfect postmodern fashion, Burke and James took a part of each of these names, combining them to make something completely different, perhaps making people think that these lenses were something more than they actually were. However, unlike what Chrysler tried to do with the Eagle, these lenses were essentially good lenses that just did not make the grade because they had minor manufacturing defects or mismatched cells, preventing them from being sold under a serious or a luxury brand name. And while they might not have been good enough for the pixel peepers and posers of the time, they certainly were good enough for most actual users for all intents and purposes. Even in the same model range, there are almost no two of these cameras which are the same. Perhaps due to the fact that they did not all follow the same design, not all came from the same place, or made by the same people, or even in the same factory. And Burke and James moved around. They had at least eight different addresses before being bought out by Burley Brooks in the 70s. This is a bit like Soviet tanks, no two of which are the same. Like two Grover cameras, two Soviet T-55 tanks might look the same on the outside, but there are no two which are that exactly the same. No parts are interchangeable, not even a screw or a bolt, because like the Grover, they too do not all follow the same plan, come from the same place or built by the same people or even the same factory. Some Grover cameras have a single rear frame, some have a double, some have a geared monorail, some have a friction rail, some have a Bakelite front frame, some have a wooden front frame, some have big knobs and little knobs, some have only big knobs or only small knobs. Finally. There is the name, and the name is important like everything else about the Birkin James. The name suggests something about the camera beyond its actual physical properties. Grover is the name of a discombobulated blue monster from Sesame Street, but it's also the name of a U.S. president not known for anything significant other than his name. A sensible, stable, scandal-free period, which you only vaguely remember anything about. Nothing exciting, but nothing bad either, and maybe therein lies the true meaning of the name. The Grover works, and it does exactly what you expect of it.